Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. I've been setting up a new PC this week, and one of the things that I've come to in my setup is screen sets. And screen sets are one of the things that I always come back to for workflow enhancement. They're just a critical part of my mixing and editing workflow. I'm using them all the time. And in my opinion, these are one of the best ways that you can speed up your workflow with using Reaper. Screen sets are a quick way for you to recall window positions and instantly switch tasks. So I have different layouts for mixing and for editing and for video production. And it's just one key press to get into those workflows and set up Reaper exactly as I like to see it. In this video, I'll show you some of my favorite screen sets, the ones that I use, uh, as well as some keyboard shortcuts that you can use to uh, access them quickly. And then later on, I'll show you some other screen set ideas uh, that you might like on your system. But before we get into that, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with thousands of classes on art, design, filmmaking, and more. Learning something new every day is one of my personal goals, and Skillshare really helps me with doing that. They have excellent classes on film and video production, color grading, iPhone filmmaking, Right now they have a workshop on running a successful YouTube channel. Click the link in the description for two free months of Skillshare Premium Membership. You get full access to everything on the site. There's so many classes. And if you want to continue on after that, it's only about $10 a month for a yearly membership. And if learning and creativity is important to you, then I'm sure you'll try out that free membership and uh, help support the channel. All right, back to the video. So here we are in Reaper, and the first thing we're going to do is go to the Screen Sets and Layouts window under the View menu. And on the Windows tab, we have our Windows Screen Sets. Screen Sets are available in every project. You only need to set this up once, and it will apply to any of your projects. You can recall a Windows set by opening this window, double-clicking in here, or else clicking the Load button. Um, you can also save into the selected slot using the Save button, or by using the shortcut keys. Uh, so I have this window screen sets loading on numbers one through five, and I have saving on shift one through five. If you want to customize those shortcuts, you can just hit this edit shortcuts button, and it's going to filter the list automatically for the save and load uh, screen sets up to 10. So this window layout that way I have here is pretty much how I like it. So let's say I open up the mixer and I've got it this height. That looks pretty good to me. I can have one large track plus the entire mixer um, visible at once and I can see my inserts and my sends pretty easily. If I have a MIDI item that loads in a floating window, let's actually dock this window and I'll set this to the same tab as the mixer so it replaces the mixer and I think that's how I would like to, to have it and this is about the right height for editing MIDI, in my opinion. So I can close that. Now I do like to have a toolbar up above my main window. So I'm gonna right click here, open toolbar, and I'm going to the editing toolbar, one I've set up before. And if I just adjust that to the height that I like, it looks about right. And this is the position for this one is um, at top of main window. So now I'm going to close. Uh, let's just check all the other windows. Video window floating. Probably put it like this big in case I need it. Close it. Um, it's, it's always good to go through these other uh, windows that you might open up. Maybe I'll dock this one and then close it. And then next time I open it, it's going to be in that position. Media Explorer, it's floating. So I'm actually going to dock this, dock Media Explorer and Docker, and I'll just have it replace the mixer again. Because I don't tend to use the mixer and the Media Explorer at the same time. So I'll just close that and close the dock. So now that I want to save, I'm going to hit my Shift 1 keyboard shortcut. So let's give this a name like Edit. This is my main starting point. My projects are always going to come back to this window layout. We've got the main window position, which is um, this Reaper window 
the main Reaper window, where is it going to be, which monitor, things like that. The tool window positions, that's toolbars and things like that. Docker selected tab, so um, when you have the dock open, which one is visible at, at that time. Mixer flags is things like the inserts and sends being visible or not. Layouts is track layouts and things like that. Um, and then last focus can be wherever you last clicked. So in this case, it, it didn't detect anything. I can just save this again. So I have the arrange view selected, shift one, and then main edit view is selected. OK, so now let's make some changes. So let's open up the mixer. And I'm going to take the, and I usually don't have the mixer open plus the toolbars. I don't really need that toolbar. So I'm going to close that toolbar. And I'll just make sure that the master mixer track has the um, has all these flags like um, clickable icon for folder tracks to show and hide children. I like that. Um, show effects parameters when size permits. Let's enable that. And um, any of the options here will get saved with your window set. And so this is actually going to be my screen set three. And so this is, um, I don't know, mixer open. And I'm actually just going to check things like the effects browser. Where does that go? That actually loaded um, where I would want it. And you can change the mix, the uh, effects browser um, columns by double click on that. So I might do that. So I do actually have the mixer open and the effects browser at the same time. If, for example, your effects browser was like this floating, you would just right click in in the frame of it, go to dock effects browser in Docker. And if it's not in this position, let's say it's over here instead, um, you would drag the, the handle for that. There. You would drag the actual uh, the tab here, and you can hold down the control key, and that will uh, give you a bit more adjustment for where that goes. Right about there looks right. And so I'm going to save this one again. Now let's do another one with the effects browser uh, floating and the mixer floating. And technically, this one is going to be on a second monitor. I can't do that right now because I only have the one monitor connected. But often when I'm mixing and I'm you know, not recording a video at the same time, then I will have my mixer pretty much full screen and, um, and undocked. I'm also going to put in my mixer sidebar here. And I'm going to put it pretty much right across the top left of the Reaper window. And then I'll put my mixer up here. And then I'll put my effects browser in the uh, top right like this. And so this will be my screen set too. So I'm going to press shift two to save this as big mixer. One thing you need to watch out for with things like this, uh, if you're using the last focus, um, you want to make sure that it's on something like Mixer rather than the effects browser. Because when you switch to this and you want to, if you accidentally switch to this and you want to quickly go to another screen set, it's going to, it's not going to be typing into the effects browser. That happens sometimes. So save. So we got one, two, three. So screen set four is going to be quite a lot different. It's going to be my single monitor video edit type of layout. So this one's a little more complicated or a lot more complicated, and uh, I'll show you. So the video window is going to be docked. All of these things are going to be docked in the to the top of the Reaper window. This, this is going to look really weird at first. I'm going to bring that, bring the mixer over there. I'm going to have the effects browser on the left and with the columns like this. I'm going to set the transport position to, to the bottom of main window. I don't really use it that often, but um, it is helpful sometimes for the selection amounts. Um, so I've got mixer, effects browser, 
I also want the action list. And so the actions are going to be in that tab as well. I need my editing toolbar. So I'm going to open up the editing toolbar. And this one I want on this tab. So I've got my video window. I've got my editing actions that I don't need all the time. I definitely can't have it take up a lot of space in here. Because um, when you're on one small window and you have to have video nice and clear and you need access to all these things, um, space is a premium. So. so I think this is pretty much how I would like to have it for video editing. I need about, I need a little less than half of the space for the video window. The other thing I can do is actually have my docked transport. Um, I can actually dock the, uh, I can undock the transport, which put it here. And now, um, and so now the transport is actually in a dock and I can put the editing toolbar in the dock. So I've got my transport and my editing toolbar in one position. And I can make that nice and small down at the bottom. And I still have access to the transport if I need it. One other thing I'm going to get here is the monitoring effects window. I'm going to put that on uh, beside the mixer. And I'm going to save that with Shift 4. And this is video edit 1. So one, two, three, and four. Something else you might like to do is just have a layout that opens a bunch of the windows that are less commonly used, but you don't want to dig through the menu every time you want to use them. So you might want one that brings up the grouping matrix or the um, performance meter or the project media effects bay. You might want to have all of these as floating windows. And we'll just position these somehow so we can see everything all at once. So here we have the performance meter, the project bay, the grouping matrix. We can have even more floating here. Uh, but th these are things you don't tend to need the entire mixer for. Or um, you, know, you might just come to this to make a, a quick change, and then you close it, go back to one of your other layouts. So I'm going to put this on number six. And this is, um, let's say, miscellaneous. So one goes there, and I'll double click to load number six. You can also do the inspector layout. So we're going to open up the mixer. We're actually going to dock the mixer on the left. We're going to set up the mixer so that we're not seeing the master track. And we just have a single track uh, we'll just adjust the width of the mixer so it's a single track. Then we've got a big fader for the selected track. This will follow the selected track. Might have to tweak this just a little bit to get this to only show a single track. So with this, we can see things like the track effects listed here. So I'll just put in a uh, re-EQ on there. And we can set this up um, to undock this. Just float that in this layout. We go to View and then Floating Mixer Master. We have this master track. And we can put this on the right. And so I have the master track on the right. I've got the selected track on the left. You could flip that if you prefer. Um, a lot of people like to have window layouts like this. I see this a lot for sound designers. They have big wide screens, and they have lots of editing workspace. Uh, and they have that horizontal space to uh, put in selected tracks and things like that. Um, and they don't need the full mixer. Let's say you always like to have your oscilloscope visible in this type of view. We can. I don't know, we could set this up down here at the bottom of the screen. Something like that. For this type of work, you might like to have something like that. So let's, uh, let's save this to um, number seven. 
So this is a inspector layout. So we can go from editing with just a really basic layout um, over to number seven, which has track inspector, the mixer, and the floating effects. You can also use screen sets inside of custom actions. So you could do things like um, one button that hides all the tracks except for your lead vocal. It shows you the track channel. It floats all of the effects. So that's screen sets in Reaper. One of my favorite features, it saves me so much time. Once it's set up, it's, it's just so nice to be able to instantly switch between different window layouts um, to go from editing dialogue to editing videos, um, mixing music, things like that. It's super powerful. I wish more apps would do this. Um, but yeah, it's, it's great. One of my favorite features. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. It really helps out the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.